in this video we are going to talk about 10 ways you deactivate as a fearful avoidant. I am Pauline Timmer and I am so happy you are here because deactivation is so confusing for both partners and understanding it better can really, really, really help you. So let's talk a little bit real quick about what deactivation is because it's definitely attachment style lingo um, and I don't want to run the risk of you not knowing it. So all the insecure attachment styles have uh, deactivation and activation mechanisms. The anxious preoccupied usually only uses uh, activation mechanisms, which means that is the way you pull your partner close. The avoidant um, attached use deactivation mechanisms mostly, um, which means you push your partner away. The fearful avoidant uses both which makes it so freaking confusing because the one moment you want them close and you you actively do things to pull your partner close and the next moment you are pushing them away and a lot of times you don't even know why you're doing it but also not that you are doing it so that is what we are going to talk about in this video 10 ways you deactivate so 10 ways you push your partner away the first one is very common for the fearful avoidant because what the fearful avoidant has more than the deactivation mechanisms from the avoidant attached is the emotional volatility. So where the avoidant attached will uh, push partners away in a more subdued way, <laughs> I don't know a different word right now, um, the fearful avoidant tends to use more emotional intensity while pushing the partner away. Um, so the first one is getting angry. Getting angry really is um, a lot of times a go-to when you haven't healed at all. As soon as you start healing, this mostly is the first one to go. So the first way you um, stop deactivating because it's very clear. Um, so something happens, your partner gets too close or your partner makes a remark and you are triggered. There's another video on my channel about uh, ways you are triggered as a fearful avoidant. You can check that out. I'll put it in the description below. Um, you are triggered and then you get angry to push your partner away. Anger is always a way to break the connection and push somebody away to put them in a place that feels safe enough for you, far away enough from you that feels safe. And getting angry definitely is one way to do that and it's also very confusing and a lot of times afterwards you feel guilty you feel shame even um, so it's it's not a, a fun mechanism to have the activation mechanism to have but it's a very common one so you are not alone <laughs> the second one is becoming critical um, and this can go hand in hand with being angry it can also just stand alone but what can happen is you get triggered, again, your partner gets too close or uh, says something or you think of something or even you can be talking about uh, the future and, and wanting to get married and all of a sudden your fear fear brain just jumps on and is like, no, 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 that's, that's scary, that's threatening, we're not going to do that. Um, and all of a sudden you become really critical of everything your partner does or says or the way he or she looks or talks. And it can be really small, small things which can make you feel so superficial. Like I remember uh, I would be critical about the, the brow, yeah, brow hairs of um, my now husband, Aryan. And um, I would be critical that he didn't cut them enough and it was just silly, but um, it was such a big thing. It felt like such a big, big thing in the moment because it was a deactivation mechanism and it has to feel really real and very really big in order for you to really feel that that connection is broken and your partner is at a safe distance that's what it's made for so even though it can be really small things they feel really big for you and it's very good to um to acknowledge that and um to not make yourself wrong for it or or think you're crazy because of it um you, you definitely aren't crazy. This is how it's designed. So becoming critical is uh, the second way you deactivate. There are a lot of ways, way more than 10, but we're going to do 10. <laughs> um, the third one is blaming. 
And this sometimes goes hand in hand with being critical, but sometimes stands alone in the way that it could be that it's just going really well in your relationship and uh, you actually realize you're happy in a way. <laughs> um, or it's just, at least it's just very stable. And all of a sudden that's not enough. That's not enough. And um, because the fearful avoidant wants perfection because imperfection lies security. That's what your fear brain thinks. And that's not true, but that's what your fear brain wants. It just wants 100% certainty that this will work forever. And the moment you, for instance, realize that you're actually quite happy or things are stable, um, your fear brain can be like, Oh, but that's not perfect and it has to be perfect. So all of a sudden you start thinking about the ways it's not perfect, which makes you feel unhappy or, or shines a light on the, maybe the areas that you are unhappy in. Um, and all of a sudden you're blaming your partner for things. You're blaming your partner for not being romantic enough. So, uh, why doesn't your partner just bring home flowers or write you love notes? And you are, it feels like you are expressing your unhappiness and it feels like a healthy thing to do. It feels like this is just something you have to do in order to build a healthy relationship. But please, the next time you feel that urge, just take a couple of breaths and, and try to see if there's actually something triggering you in that moment. Um, and try not to express it in the moment. Just try to calm down and um and see if something is triggering you and if it's still um an issue you want to talk about 24 hours later then please do i mean i don't stuff things inside and not talk about it that's not what i'm saying but don't um express it in the moment you feel it because it definitely can be a deactivation me mechanism and what you create is a lot of confusion for you and for your partner um, so just waiting that 24 hours can really help if you're able to. The fourth one is feeling resentment or feeling better than your partner or losing all respect for your partner. And this one also, when you don't know this is a de deactivation mechanism, can feel so confusing and also so powerless because it could be that you actually have found somebody that you really care about and then all of a sudden you start resenting that person and you start losing all respect for that person and it feels like well this is not a good basis to um to build a relationship on because you should always feel respect for each other um and you just you get annoyed by all the little things that he or she does you might even think they're dumb or incapable and this is actually a way to make you feel more powerful. Um, so it could happen in a way that, or in a moment that you actually feel triggered around vulnerability. Um, it could also be that um, it is just a way to break the connection because when you feel better than other people, so better than your partner, there is a difference between you two. And knowing that everybody is just exactly right as they are everybody is lovable everybody is worthy of love makes everybody equal and that can be very threatening for a fearful avoidant because that means that there is a possibility for connection here there is a possibility for connection as long as you feel better than others or less than others there is no ability for connection and that's what you're very afraid of so actually feeling better than and losing all respect for your partner is a way to break the connection and to deactivate then another one is not being able to speak or not speaking. So um, what a partner of a fearful avoidance sees is that you just drop a wall. You, you just put up a wall. You don't speak. You retreat in yourself completely. And it can be, you can actually seem a little bit mad, but just refuse to speak. But what can actually be happening is that you are flooded with emotions and feelings and that you cannot handle that. This is actually quite an avoidant way of deactivating, but definitely one the fearful avoidant has to. And sometimes it actually can be so extreme that you cannot physically talk. You cannot physically speak. I remember these moments so vividly that something triggered me. I had no idea that it was a trigger. I had no idea I was a fearful avoidant, but I do remember that I was just not able to speak. And, I, and my husband would ask me questions and 
would try to reach me and all of that just put up more, more walls and I just could not get words out of my mouth. So one of the ways we started working with that or I started healing that is that we uh, came up with a hand sign. I, I don't remember what it what it is anymore. It was something with a fist and then it's long. It's a long time ago. It's 10 years ago. Um, but when I did that, he knew that I, I just couldn't talk at that moment. Um, and so I would just calm down and, and we would talk uh, at a later point. Again, I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> I had no idea this was the fearful avoidant attachment style. But that really did help because I just could not physically speak. And that made him insecure. Uh, so that hand gesture made him know like, oh, it, okay, she just can't talk right now. She's not choosing to not talk. She just physically can't. So that might help. Might help. Um, physical distance is also um, a, a possibility. So deactivating by just walking away, for instance, is also um, part of this one. <laughs> then there's distrusting your partner and um, therefore asking a million questions. So it could be that you're triggered out of nowhere and all of a sudden you're like, can I trust them? And it could be in a different couple of ways. It could be that um, you distrust whether they will cheat on you. It could be distrust that they will leave you. It could be distrust that they really got you, like they, they are there for you and they can protect you. It can be in different ways. But all of a sudden you have a million questions. It could also be something simple like your, your partner coming home late from work and you're like, what happened? And not even not even necessarily making the story of um, they cheated, but making the story around it of um, apparently I'm not um, worthy of getting a phone call that you're late and blah, blah, blah. So um, distrusting your partner and asking a million questions is also a way of, of breaking the connection. And that sounds weird because I think all of us at some point in our lives have heard that questions are the way to connect with another human being. But that really depends on where the questions are coming from and what the goal of the questions are. And when the questions come from a place of deep fear and wanting confirmation, they are not focused on connection. They are focused on safety and security. And it's not wrong. It's just that that does not lead necessarily to connection. Even though in the moment you feel like it is, you feel like you just want to know this for sure and then you'll be fine. But it's actually what you're doing in the moment is breaking the connection because it doesn't feel safe for whatever reason. So, so distrusting and asking a million questions when you notice yourself doing that, check yourself because it could be that you're triggered. Then another very, very confusing one is feeling guilt and shame for something you've done in the past. Um, and then retreating and this could happen in, in any moment like you could be in a conversation with your partner and, and something and it could actually be that you think oh I really like you like I really I really maybe even love you <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're like but I talked to this guy or girl at a party three years ago and maybe I was a little bit too flirty and what if that's really wrong and should I tell my partner but what if they leave me so what you do in that moment is you retreat to your head because you cannot handle the feeling of actually liking your partner and relaxing in that. So when you feel a lot of guilt and shame and start ruminating or, or thinking, obsessively thinking about things you've done in the past, and you notice yourself retreating to your head, um, see if you're triggered. See if something was triggered. And, it, and, and a lot of times this comes from um, a positive thing. So it comes from you actually feeling happy in your relationship or actually liking your partner and realizing that and just being so afraid to lose them. So what you do is you break the connection by going into your head and, and not coming back into connection until you feel like you're perfect or you've uh, solved this problem. But what actually is the case, you won't come back into connection until you feel like you've punished yourself enough. Because feeling guilt and shame around things you've done in the past um, is a way of punishing yourself and, and breaking the connection. Then another one that I really for a long time didn't see was actually the de deactivation mechanism, um, is making jokes or getting playful when things get intimate. 
And this is such an interesting one because as a fearful avoidant, you long for passion. I made a video about that too. I'll put it in the description below why that is. But you you want passion. You think you want passion. Um, and then when there is a possibility for it, <laughs> for real true intimacy, uh, out of which lifelong passion comes, you're scared. And it gets it just gets too intense and too real. So you start making jokes. And you start getting playful and um, and that is also a way of breaking the connection. And I remember doing this and in the beginning I was like, what's what's happening? <laughs> what are you doing? And after a while I just got annoyed when I did it and I didn't know why I did it. I had no idea why I did it. Uh, so I would do it and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, I did it again. And in, in the end we found a way around it and after a long time, I think after years, I found out it was actually because I was so scared of the intimacy that was a possibility in that moment because I didn't I didn't catch it. Like I got play for or made jokes in such an early stage that I didn't um, catch the moment that it actually could turn into an intimate moment. So I thought I was just making jokes. <laughs> I was actually deactivating. So this is a sneaky one also. Um, then the ninth one is focusing on a problem in the relationship and trying to fix it and really focusing on fixing it. So this can come to play in compatibility is what it comes down to a lot of the times. Like do, do our different ways of seeing the world fit and then all of a sudden you're obsessively thinking that over and trying to fix the problem. It could be that all of a sudden you think your communication is a problem or that you think you you're, you two don't have enough humor together and all your energy goes into fixing that problem. And what you're doing is actually postponing the moment that you can actually relax in and surrender to the relationship. So as long as you're fixing, or, or, as long as you're focusing on a problem and trying to fix it, that gives you a sense of safety because you don't have to surrender to uh, the relationship yet. So when you notice yourself focusing on a problem and Googling <laughs> ways to solve this, see if it's actually um, a fear, anxiety or an unease in relaxing in and surrendering to the relationship exactly as it is because it does not have to be perfect and i know your fear brain wants it to be perfect but it does not have to be perfect you're human your partner is human and you're both growing and growing the rest of your life and that's totally normal and totally healthy and totally fine all right and then the last one the last one is checking and doubting your love for your partner and this happens mostly in in just very healthy and stable relationships where there aren't a lot of issues and aren't a lot of pro problems, then this is a way of deactivating because again, you retreat to your head and you're looking for that confirmation um, because you're just so scared that either you're making a mistake and you might hurt them in the future or uh, you're actually quite scared for your feelings, which is so weird because you're checking whether your love is there for your partner or whether it's intense enough whether you love them enough whether there's a spark whether you miss them enough so you could think that what you want is just uh, to feel more and more love and it's not there but a lot of times what's happening is that in that moment you're actually scared to allow the feelings that are there the love that is there to allow yourself to really feel that it just feels so uneasy in your body you are not used to um, stable and safe and relaxed love so what you do is you start checking and you start doubting your feelings because that's also a way to retreat and have a reason to not surrender to the relationship because that's what you're actually really scared of all right wow <laughs> these were 10 ways to deactivate I, I could talk about any of them for an hour there's so much to talk about but I really hope this was valuable let me know in the comments below if there's any one of these that you recognize, but also if there's one that you weren't aware of doing and you're like, oh shit, I do that because it helps so much. And maybe you have more ways that you deactivate and put them in the comments too. Let's help each other and, um, and just see all the ways we can deactivate so that we can recognize them and 
learn how to soothe ourselves in the moment instead of going into deactivating mechanisms. So if you're if you've watched this whole video and you're still like, I'm not sure if I'm a fearful avoidant, you can do the am I actually a fearful avoidant quiz. Uh, it's in the description below. And also, if you are just sick and tired of deactivating and not knowing what's going on and you just don't want to get triggered so easily and deactivate so easily, put yourself on the wait list. I am developing a program. I don't know when it's done yet, um, but this will absolutely be what we're tackling in the program. So you won't feel as triggered, which makes life and, and relationships less of a minefield but also you won't go into these deactivation mechanisms because they are so exhausting. And I really want for you that you can just relax in relationships and that you can enjoy them because you are so very, very worthy of love and of warmth and stability. Um, so yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. And um, next week will be um, a video all on... Um, the reasons why you deactivate. So now we had ways you deactivate and next week we'll talk about reasons why you deactivate as a fearful avoidant.